What is up, everybody? Like that beam. It's time for Nerdy for 30's <laughs> special monthly bonus pod review preview. We're going to give you a quick spoiler free review of everything that we covered this previous month in the pod. Then we're going to do some mailbag letters, do some mailbag letters. We're going to answer some questions that we were sent in the mailbag, uh, read those pieces of mail, and then we're going to preview what we got coming up for you in November. Tim, are you ready? Yeah, I am ready. I also liked the uh, the casualness in which you said light the beam. You know, it's usually a call to action, but in this time it was just like, eh, light the beam. Uh, I think it's kind of fun. So this week we watched uh, A Haunting. It's like you're kind of slipping it in there. Like, so the, this past month we watched A Haunting in Venice, uh, light the beam. The Exorcist <laughs> Believer. <laughs> I'd the like Exorcist. The beam for that. <laughs> I'd light the beam for that. Would you light the beam? For The Exorcist, the original one, 1973. Uh, and then we did Scream featuring Babe Finley. That was fun. And then uh, we just did, what was the most recent one we did? Oh, yeah, oh, The Beetle Juice. Juice. Mr. Beetlejuice. And uh, it was a good, it was a, it was a scary enough month for you, Kevin. It was, uh, you know, it's interesting because I think we tend to lose people when we do some of these horror movies. And... <laughs> I think that's just in general, you know, horror is something that people are either really in on or really out on. I think Scream is the best shot. And I mean, Haunting in Venice, like both of those, I think, have crossover appeal. But like even Scream being one of the horror movies that I think has the most mass appeal, I think there's still a lot of people whose feelings about the ghost faced mask and the fact that there's always a very prominent very shiny knife on these posters means that they're just mm -hmm. never going to watch a screen movie so i hope it was definitely it was spooky enough for me i hope it wasn't too spooky for everybody listening out there i like that i think horror movies are the country music of film genres interesting it's just so I love polarizing <laughs> I feel like I, when I say I like everything, it's just I do like country music and I like horror movies. But there's a lot of people who are like, I'll listen to anything except scary movies. <laughs> I'll listen to it. Put on anything, but no country. Don't believe in that. You know, it's just classic rock. I mean, it's all it's just playing the hits. And uh, I love it. I don't know if. Yeah, I don't know if anything we saw was too, too scary. But I agree with you. If you're trying to get into any horror or even just watch like a good movie, Scream is just a straight up. Scream is just a straight up good movie. Everyone should watch it. It's not. Well, it is the beginning. I guess there's. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I was, I'm right there with you, dude. <laughs> it's like the rest of the movie is pretty chill. I mean, it's not. Uh, I don't I don't feel like it's too violent. It's not realistically violent. That's what I would say. No, but I yeah. do agree. That one thing at the beginning is more fucked than the franchise gets for a long time. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, it's <clears throat> it's honestly, in retrospect, kind of crazy because everybody always talks about how like that first 12 minutes of Scream is like a perfect. It's like an incredible thesis statement. It's them as people who are about to do a genre parody proving as all parodies should do that they could if they wanted to just participate in the genre because they're good enough at it. And yet it's so interesting that like maybe the thing that keeps it from being a full thesis for the Scream franchise is that it does get that gory in the beginning when the rest of the Scream movies really don't. Yeah, I just watched Friday the 13th, like the 2014. Yeah. One. Oh, wait, 2014. And it's or like a recenter one. It's like the most recent Friday the 13th with Jason and. I like there's they just they you know, there was a period where they did reboots of all these things and they, there's like an earlier 20, 2000 ish, I think, uh, or 2010s uh, Friday the 13th. And in it, they do the exact same thing. Well, they do like kind of like a 20 minute separate piece up top and then they get into like the real story. And I found it so refresh i'm like every movie should every horror movie should do that they should do a proof of concept in the first mm -hmm. 20 minutes and then just a cool reset and then just get into the movie it's just so cool it's a great way to cram in extra violence extra kills extra action and man i'm all for it i'm all for it damn dude Kevin, you know recommended does it really well oh no well what are you gonna say the first conjuring movie which is no question it's not just on my mount rushmore of horror movies it's on my mount rushmore of movies like the first conjuring is one of my favorite movies of all time um mm -hmm. 
Mm. They open it up with like a five minute vignette with Annabelle, the doll. And you learn everything you need to about the way this movie is going to work and who the Warren family is. It's incredible. It's so well done. It's really good. I think. Did we just do the third one on our pod? I remember we had Ingrid on. I think the first one is really good. And then kind of, I think the third one kind of left a little more negative taste in my mouth where I'm like, not exactly. But I'm for, I forget how good the first Conjuring is. And I remember yeah. really enjoying it a lot. Do you have any other recommendations from the list? Just hmm. on ready. Pick one movie that you're like, yo, people should watch it. I mean, Beetlejuice, if you haven't seen it, we were very. <sighs> it turns out it's divisive. Whatever. I didn't know that, <laughs> but it turns out it's a divisive movie. So. You're going to need to see that to do your own research, form your own opinion. (laughs) Don't just listen to the mainstream media. (laughs) I, I, well, okay. I, yeah, as far as like another, I mean, I think I say it every single pod, but I, I just still think about John Wick. Oh, you mean from anything we've seen this year? Oh yeah. I was just going off in general. What, what, uh, well, we could (laughs) I, I thought it was funny that you pulled that one out. Yeah, just I just I still think about John Wick at least every other day or once or like once a week. Like I I think about John Wick more than I think about any other piece of entertainment I've seen recently. Uh all the time. It's all I think about. I I don't know. I don't I don't know what else to say. I'm I'm a basic dude, I guess. I just I know what I like and it pandered to me and I'm into it. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you haven't seen John Wick four and you're into action, you got to see it. You got to see it. You got to see it. Tim, you heard me on this pod. I did not care for John Wick one or two. I think three and four are achievements. I think it's like the whole Infinity War and Endgame argument where it's like, which one's better? Because they both do so much. It's unreal how good these two movies are. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I think John Wick four. I don't know if we currently have it at the top of the list. I think John Wick 4 should be like number one or number two on our list. I agree. It's it's right now. It's number three behind Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse and The Last of Us. And I get it, but I disagree. John Wick 4 is the coolest thing I saw this year by a mile. Kevin, speaking a mile, the post office has to go mile by mile <laughs> through the oh storm, my. rain or shine. I and, thought you were just uh, letting your uh, your southern accent slip in. Speaking a mile, speaking a mile, speaking a mile, Kevin. I don't know. We got the the dang damn message that came by today, and he left his bag. <laughs> we got anything? He leave any notes behind for us? I'm expecting yeah, some news from the front. Makes it sound like most of the mail we get us is <clears throat> makes it sound like most of the mail we get is on accident. The mailman <laughs> left behind a couple of letters. So there yeah. are now finders keepers. <laughs> All right. I got a new email from for us right here. Dear Nerdy for 30. We at Spectrum have noticed that your internet <laughs> usage <laughs> has been higher than usual. What do you think? <laughs> think about renewing. I don't know. You should double check with them on that because our Zoom connection is set for like 360p video i don't think that's correct <laughs> i think that's as high zoom goes combined we're using about a megabyte of <laughs> internet connection a month right now <laughs> i should be paying by the uh, bite we're just h we can't afford the d oh my god this is an underdog podcast you know <laughs> don't say that stop saying that we're it's an, an underdog, underdog podcast. podcast tim we're the <laughs> voice of the about? people no, you know, we're we not, are the voice. We don't need to worry about sponsors. When you're what listening you to a podcast about? with sponsors, you don't know if they really mean what they're saying. You can't trust them. You can't trust these people that you're listening to. You know, the daily who can trust that? This is, <laughs> this is getting dangerous. <laughs> I don't trust a word. Babaro says Babaro. Babaro is generative AI now. We all know mm-hmm. it. Hey, but you know what? We don't have sponsors. <laughs> He's been AI for a long time. You no, just... speak it. No, fuck you. Don't talk about the sponsor <laughs> thing. You know what? We could get sponsors. We've had offers. And I'll tell you what. I'm going to say this because I don't I don't know if this is it's it's not going to happen. So we got I'm going to say pretty far 
into a pitch with Bloomhouse to do a cross promotion oh with with Night Swim, and uh, we pitched to them us cold. We pitched this cold. I this is a to... cold call. This is a cold pitch that Kevin is very responsible for. But we got a hold of someone at Blumhouse and pitched them us hosting a Night Swim viewing it's a new movie coming out it's like an action movie but it's like a, a scary pool and people keep getting attacked in the pool and we wanted to host a viewing in a pool and uh i think it got pretty high up there and uh and then they then they stopped talking to us but i but that's the kind of promotion that we should be doing i'm saying it's a great idea you should be recognized for how great an idea well it was my idea but you yeah. executed <laughs> and then it ultimately didn't happen and i think we should both be patting ourselves on the back for this regardless um either way yeah if that's something that you would be interested in us hosting a pool party slash night swim viewing uh please let us know we'll come to your town and <laughs> we will host it uh and that'd be that'd be great honestly if we could just wonderful. fly to wherever where are most of our viewers ohio if we went to Ohio and I think, did a summer pool yeah, I think party. most of our listeners are in India. <laughs> oh, my God. What if that was like, oh, dude, if we went to India for the sole purpose of viewing <laughs> Blumhouse movie Night Swim in a pool, <laughs> that would be insane. <laughs> Absolutely It'd be incredible. insane. We, Gosh, I, we have to know, make this offer happen. Goes, Speaking of that, if you are listening to this in India, offer goes for any any of these movies that were being recommended. Joan, I know, is already out. I, I don't think Kalki is out yet. There's a movie coming out called like Kalki 2829 AD. It looks fucking wild. It's got this guy that we loved from Bahubali in it. You know, let's let's crowdsource it. Let's go to India and see this movie. Let's do it in a pool. I don't in care. You guys That's throw out a movie you want to watch with us in a pool. We'll be there, dude. With with swim trunks on, floaties <laughs> attached. All right. Should we get to the uh, Should we get to the mail? No. Yes. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> All right. Here we go. First piece is from our dude Ben Balarucky. Ben. ben writes, "Hey y'all, the bobblehead arrived." He's referring to, of course, the bobblehead that he won in our listener contest that we did with people that subscribe to our Substack. Um, it was a bobblehead, if you didn't see the post, of Mr. Met, the New York Mets mascot, dressed as Indiana Jones. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a uh, just a just a once in a lifetime piece of merchandise to come across. And uh, Ben won it. He says, thanks for sending it. Upon opening it, his wife checked to make sure that he didn't pay money for it. <laughs> and i think that's the caliber of giveaway that we can promise you for the duration of this show um, if we ever give anything else away it will be of that caliber he also writes about a movie called mr go that came out in 2013 have you ever heard of this tim i've never heard of it get a load of this but i'm in Ben writes, do you want all the emotional payoff of an animal slash human story of intertwined hardships to overcome? Does Airbud not have high enough stakes for you? Do you like <laughs> the idea of gambling bookies trafficking children? What if those children are carnies? What if this story centered around a lowland gorilla? Do all these oh. questions seem unrelated or strung together haphazardly? Then you need to watch Mr. Go currently free on Tubi. This movie will get Tim to shit all over a child teen actor, so it'll make for a great episode. <laughs> it's a bit long, but please, please stay for the end. The penultimate scene of the movie is nothing short of cinematic perfection. Enjoy, and thanks for the pod. Ben, thank you for that recommendation. Oh, my God. Thank you very much. That sounds incredible. Gosh, a bad child acting and a lowland gorilla? I am all over this thing. <laughs> Oh my, I bet we have to pay a bunch of money for it though. It sounds too good to be true. Oh wait, Tubi's free? Tubi's Sponsor of the pod. Nerdy for 30. Uh, if you're looking to watch a good movie and you don't want to uh, have to deal with subscription package, uh, none of those those uh, annoying fees, go on Tubi. Free, free viewing, uh, tons of commercials. And you're going to remember why people switch to subscriptions in the first place. <laughs> Tubi, home of Mr. Go. Dr. Go? Mr. Go. Although Mr. I can only really imagine this, this gorilla. <laughs> Dr. <ends up>. Go. <laughs> the sequel is Dr. Go, Dr. where the gorilla Go. gets gets his doctorate. 
See, I'm thinking we do like a James Bond crossover here. <laughs> oh, Doctor Go. Doctor No. Yeah, could be good. Hey, all I'm saying is I've never seen James Bond fight a gorilla. And that yeah. feels like <laughs> that feels like an oversight on somebody's part. <laughs> Honestly, now I'm just picturing I was like, what if we just threw James Bond in this movie? And I was like, <laughs> you know, he's just in the background the whole time. Sure. What if we just started throwing James Bond into stuff and he just passes through the background on a on a separate mission that is completely unrelated to the movie? And you just see <laughs> it would take like if you put 100 movies and cut them together, you would be able to see this whole mission unfurl across the whole world. That's brilliant. I'm in. I know it's brilliant. It'll never happen like Night Swim, but it's brilliant. It is brilliant. Oh, it is genius. So many of our incredible ideas will never be made. No, but Ben, <laughs> thank you very much. We will strongly consider it. I'll oh. watch it for pleasure and then we'll watch it for business. <laughs> <laughs> In that order, <laughs> we got another piece of mail here from our pal Alex Moore. Alex writes, Hey guys, long time lighter, first time beam. Yes, just wanted to share some feedback. <laughs> oh man, Alex is coming in hot, coming in real Love hot. It. Just wanted to share some feedback, a recommendation, and a couple questions for you. That's the trifecta, Alex. Feedback. It is. Thank you for your refreshing takedown of Mission Impossible. What a vacuous and bland franchise <laughs> that people gaslight themselves into thinking is good. I'm getting so fucking amped reading this. I feel like when Fallout came out, the hipster film was uh, the hipster film bro take was here's why Mission Impossible is actually genius. And I can't stand it. I'd argue even I'd argue even that the first one doesn't hold up all the way through. Anyway, mm. keep fighting the good fight. <clears throat> Amazing. Yeah. Alex, I, I completely agree. These movies are trash. <laughs> They're not all trash, but they aren't great. Yeah, I was <laughs> immeasurably disappointed when I finally watched them this year and found out that uh, they're they're not all trash. But yeah, they're they're not great. Recommendation. Well, it's the best one. Fallout. I think I might have ranked last on my list. It's one with Henry Cavill in it. Yeah. Well, your list was was fucking un insane. My list. Subscribe to Substack at Kevin's latest updates. Mm. I'm putting the takes out there. <laughs> uh, here's the recommendation from Alex. Have you guys seen Puss in Boots? The Last Wish? I thought it was incredible Whoa. and would love to hear your takes on it. Fast paced stylistic animation with a really funny and touching script. And I've never seen any of the other Puss in Boots movies. So you can go in blind. Uh, hmm. Right on. We got some uh, we got some good news on that one coming up, Alex. I think you're going to like the answer there. And. Last. We both put on blindfolds and watched Puss in Boots. Yeah, it was. It sounded great. <laughs> so uh, we were going blind. <laughs> it sounded great. I that for some reason went over my head when you made that joke the first time. I was like, "What a strange riff Tim had." <laughs> but I'm going to back it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hey, anytime. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for Puss in Boots. It's going to be great. There's no way that we watched it before this in anticipation of this. Uh, we have, we're going in blind now, fresh, fully excited to experience Puss in Boots. And yeah, do I have to watch the other five Puss in Boots movies in order to get this? I hope not. Yeah, probably not. But no. you know what we do need to do is cover these questions that Alex had. First up. Whoa, questions too. Alex is, Alex is bringing it. Love Alex it. Alex is really bringing it. Everybody's bringing it in the mailbag today. First up, yep. if you had to draft an all-star basketball team from the fictional characters you've covered this year, who would you pick? Limit oh one gosh. character per movie slash show. <sighs> Let's keep it to just the five that are on the court. <laughs> yeah, we don't. You want to go 12 deep with this? I oh, mean, my it, gosh. I could be argued into sixth man, but I think let's mm. keep it like let's keep mm -hmm. it starting five. Okay. I'll say uh, right off the bat, I'm taking someone from Transformers Rise of the Beasts. I I think it's got to be it's not Optimus Prime. It's going to be the the gorilla, the giant gorilla from it. Oh, I, sure. I feel like, you know, the, you know, gorilla, they're moving, they're swinging on stuff. I think I think I would love to watch, you know, that gorilla thing dunk a basketball. I think it would be awesome. I'm into that. Yeah. And we can have Decepticons on the other side, like and dunked on. That'd be cool, too. I, I think Megatron should be on one team and then Gorilla Prime or whatever his name was should be on the other. I like that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take got? I'm going to take Megan. Oh, from Megan. oh. 
Um, Man, Megan she's got is the, good. She's got the AI analytics. She's out there. You know, she's watching game tape. She's. If you ask Chad GPT, like if we put Chad GPT inside of a Boston Dynamics robot right now, it would be really good at playing basketball. That's what I think Megan would bring to this. Oh, Megan would have moves. She's using the backboard. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> she's like she's doing tiktok dances when she comes down from dunking <laughs> and her touch isn't soft at all it's like no. a bullet from her hand <laughs> the corner of the square right into the basket yeah <laughs> it's awesome i'm uh i'm for it okay what about um one of the robots from mitchell's versus the machine okay you know, like the friendly ones that they draw faces on. They can fly. They zip around. They're probably pretty strong. I feel like they could be good at basketball. There's a, there's a lot there. And I'm also picturing at some point during this game, the basketball they're using is is the sweet little dog that uh, that's cross eyed from Mitchell's versus the machines. And he just is a little bound, round potato. And at some point he gets dunked. That'd be nice. Oh, I love that. Uh, I would like to point out that so far we have only drafted robots. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, why would we draft anything else? Just robots. Oh, man. All right. What else we got on here? I don't want to take Blue Beetle. Uh, I, I don't think I'm taking anybody from jury duty. Oh, man. I was just going to say we got to. What do you, we got to take somebody from jury duty. I think maybe we take Ronald and he doesn't realize this is a bit. He just is actually suiting up for the <laughs> for the game. But it's really all just this is all just a practical joke on Ronald. Either that or we get James Marsden to coach and he has to treat it with the sincerity that he treated <laughs> the jury duty audition. I think that would be him. I think he would be a great cl- coach. James Marsden I- yelling at some robots. I'm into that. Yeah. Oh, man. What else? Can, can we get something from Oppenheimer? Somebody in Oppie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about. Uh, Josh Hartnett's character feels like he used to play basketball, but now his knees are bad. <laughs> um, Matt. Dam- oh, my God. Dude, we saw air this year. Neither one of us has taken Michael Jordan yet. I've taken <laughs> Jordan. Just picked, I got this on Jordan. Just picked Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> we picked three robots. And we saw a and James Michael Marsden Jordan movie. <laughs> Michael Jordan. Oh my god. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. Oh, holy shit. So yeah, so uh so my team so far is Megan for sure. And then Michael Jordan. And uh, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to I'm just going to dive in here, too. I'm going to take uh, 50 cent from the expense <laughs> <horribles. laughs> Oh, man, I was debating if I should take Jason Statham from from Meg Two or from the expend for bulls, because in expend for bulls, he could do anything. And in Meg Two plot twist. He can do anything. Yeah. So I feel like basketball is just another notch in Jason Statham's belt. That is that is, you know, hanging by a thread because it's so full of notches. And uh, so I'll take I'll take just Jason Statham in general as a person. Okay. He's going to be on this. And um, oh, my gosh. What about? uh, Oh, I'm taking Groot. Oh, I was about to take Groot. I swear <laughs> to God. got to take Groot. There's no way you don't take Groot. There's going to be some scene in this basketball game where they do a Globetrotters thing, you know, where sure. they pop the ball under their shirt, but he shoves it inside of himself. And then when he opens up, there's like eight different balls. But for some reason, they only count a goal with the one that he had originally. So there's a bunch of ball or maybe maybe he just gets to shoot a bunch of balls and they all count a bunch. But that's like his Looney Tunes shtick is that he's just ripping balls out of his chest. Could be fun. Uh, what about. <laughs> that's good i'm also i'm gonna take uh mm, i'm gonna take lashana lynch's character from the woman king Ooh, because she was just fucking badass as hell she got some serious air too yeah that Her one is that one leap wild. holy shit oh um, oh oh i got a great one next please I got the possessed mom from Evil Dead Rise. <laughs> Do you remember how she moved? She was crazy. I mean, she's crawling on the walls. She's zipping all over the place. 
I mean, she could she's, fly, I think. Right? <laughs> yeah, at some point she could fly. I mean, she's she's incredible at basketball. I that's what I was thinking the whole time. I was like, man, they're they're not getting along with their mom right now. But if they can get her on a court and get her signed, man, these problems are turning around for this family. Wild. It's just oh my the gosh. exact movie air, except it's uh <laughs> yeah, it's just Matt Damon sitting down with a possessed mom. Okay, and that my, shitty high rise. My last one, even though I'm pretty sure we've done more than that. I'm taking the cocaine bear. <laughs> <laughs> so what what is my team? It's it's uh oh my god, the possessed mom from Evil Dead, the robot from <laughs> Mitchell's versus the machines, uh-huh. Groot. Uh James Marsden is coaching the team. Uh, and the cocaine bear. I feel like I had another guy coming off the bench, but I, I already forget. But yeah, it was great. Oh, my God. And uh, to close my oh, and the out. gorilla from Transformers, who I don't even remember his name, but that would be very cool. Yes. Oh, that's right. OK. Um, well, to uh, to close mine out, then I'm going to pick uh, I'm going to pick the priest, Father Karras from The Exorcist in 1973. Because there's a scene where he's <laughs> like, yeah, Karis, he's in like a like a sweater, like a sweatshirt, like a real deal sweatshirt that he's sweating in. It's just like a he's boxing. Heather Gray. He's boxing. The man's fit. He's staying in shape. Yeah. And I think, you know, he's not going to need to do much. My team has Michael Jordan on it. So I think he'll he'll round it out. So I've got uh, Father Karis from The Exorcist in 1973. I've got uh, the literal Michael Jordan. <laughs> I think you're still Megan. losing uh who else did i take on this uh lashana lynch from the woman king oh and yes. uh 50 cent from the expend expend four that's bowl. 50 cent can ball it's a good team also, also just for the record the gorilla guy is named optimus primal and he's voiced by ron perlman i forgot about that and honestly i don't know ron perlman voicing a, <laughs> a gorilla robot who's great at basketball sounds like a dream movie to me oh that's sick there's yeah oh man we got two more questions they're really great we're running out of time here but oh my gosh number one is just rapid fire if you had the power to turn one movie you covered this year into a ride at a florida theme park what would you pick and what kind of ride would it be oh man mm. i'll go first i'm picking beetlejuice and it's going to be kind of like a mixed reality ride like spider-man at uh, universal studios florida where it is like a real coaster on a track, but there's also like an experience happening around you. I'm picturing a scream, but as a haunted house. And so you're in there and so you're getting chased by Ghostface, but then people it's so so the the Ghostface killer is in your tour group. You go through the haunted house as a group and then people then the group keeps getting separated and then coming back together. And by the time you get through the house, you have to pick who the killer is. I like that. That's cool. Pretty great. Pretty Last great. question. End of the pod. Would you describe your co-host as a rat or a toad? Defend your answer. Oh, man. <sighs> I feel like we're two toads. Am I crazy? I, we're a couple of toads, my man. I think we're a couple of toads just chilling on the pad. You know, we disagree with things, but, you know, we're, we're chill the whole. I think we're pretty pleasant. Yeah. There's been things that turn me into a rat, you know, like I feel like, you know, Ryan Gosling shows up and I'm like ready to gnaw into a carcass. But sure. generally speaking, I'd like to think I'd like to think I'm toad energy. Same here, man. You know, I rat out when people bring up Mission Impossible. <laughs> I get those little teeth, those little teeth going into the front. But, you know, after I'm done gnawing for a while, take a look at my life and go back to being a toad. We're toads that occasionally rat out. Yeah, I think that's the thing. <laughs> Alex, thank you so much for writing in. Incredible. Speaking of, thank you. Puss in Boots, here's what we got coming up for November. We will be back here on Thursday with the Gen V finale. Then mm. we'll be back here shortly after the bonus pod on Tuesday, November 14th, about the Loki season two finale. We did Man. that so we could squeeze in on Thursday the 16th, the Marvels coming soon to theaters. Doesn't feel mm. like it will be, but that movie is like less than two weeks away. Yeah. After that, on Thursday, November 23rd, Scott Pilgrim takes off. Then, on Thursday, November 30th, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. 
I'll tell you my last wish is that we could keep podcasting forever, Cole. <laughs> Kevin, I wish we could. I wish but we could alas, too. The Zoom isn't pro and our time comes to an end. It does. But thank you so much for listening, everybody. Uh, <laughs> please write us another letter. We'll read it next month in the mailbag, nerdy430 at gmail.com. That is nerdy spelled out, four spelled out, F O R, and then the number 30 at gmail.com. We'll be back here we again, Jin V. Till then, stay, stay nerdy, nerdy, everybody. Bye. Bye. Oh, the mailbag makes my day. I love the mailbag. I love emails.